Amen? Why it pleased God. Because you see, there's some valuable truths about blood covenant that can set you free and make your life a whole lot more victorious as you begin to understand why blood covenant, why blood, why did it please God? Why do we have to do all these things like we're doing them? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to get some knowledge out of this. Look at your neighbor and say, that knowledge is going to bring me victory. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to walk a greater life because of what I'm learning. About blood covenant. Say, thank you, Jesus, for blood covenant. Now, tonight... We're going to learn more about blood covenant. And to learn about blood covenant, we've got to learn to recognize covenant talk. Turn to your neighbor and say covenant talk. Covenant. What is a covenant? This section, tell me. That's pretty good. That's pretty close. No blood covenant class students can answer. So in this section, somebody go ahead and build on that. What is a covenant? That's pretty good. Let's write this down again tonight. A covenant is a solemn binding agreement between two or more parties that cannot be broken except by the death of the one who breaks it. Amen? Now, I'm going to go back over that. Write this down because you're going to hear it a lot. God's people are destroyed for a lack of what? Lack of money? Lack of healing? Lack of joy? Lack of vacations? All right. So we're importing knowledge. Amen? A covenant is a solemn binding agreement between two or more parties that cannot be broken except by the death of the one who breaks it. Whew, that's awesome, isn't it? I mean, if you make covenant with somebody and you want to break it, you can break it. Just die. Whew. That gets rough, doesn't it? Amen. Now, let me ask you this. What three reasons or what three purposes do people have when they cut covenant one with another? Somebody over here, give me one. Protection, that's a good one. Somebody over here, give me another one. Business reasons. And over here, give me a third one. <laughs> Anybody? Love. I really put that section on the spot, didn't I? <laughs> Say, I love my pastor from this section. <laughs> three reasons that people cut covenant one with another. Three reasons that people make a solemn binding agreement, one that cannot be broken unless there is the death of the one who breaks it. Number one is for protection. Well, particularly when a smaller tribe cuts covenant with a bigger tribe. That gives them protection from other tribes and uh, if the big tribe gets hacked off at the little tribe, the big tribe can't run over and kill the little tribe because they got covenant. Smart thinking. We're going to discover that in the Bible here, how, how some people fooled the nation of Israel and did that. Are you with me? Secondly is business purposes. They cut covenant for business purposes so they can increase their business trade and their value so they can, can have a relationship with someone. For instance, you know, you might say that Toyota might cut covenant with GM. What do you mean? They get an agreement to build cars for one another. That means Toyota can't build for Ford. Hello? Business reasons. And then they cut covenant just because they love one another and they just want to have a oneness between them. Amen? So we understand what covenant is, why we cut covenant, but the majority of us don't recognize covenant talk when we read it in the Bible. We'll be reading along, we'll be reading some of those nice little Bible stories. Say nice little Bible stories. And those nice little Bible stories are neat to read, aren't they? 
But you see, there's more in them than just a nice little Bible story to put the kids to bed with. Are you with me? And if we begin to understand covenant talk, to your neighbor and say covenant talk, all of a sudden we're reading the Bible and we read something along and we say, that sounds like covenant talk. Do you suppose there's some kind of covenant going on here? I mean, what's happening here? Why is this taking? And it starts to give us a whole new perspective on this nice little Bible story. All of a sudden we start seeing there's purpose there. We start seeing a covenant agreement. We begin to see how that covenant agreement could shape, mold the things that go right on through the Bible, right on down from generation to generation, from century to century, millennium to millennium, because there's been a covenant made. And covenant, folks, lasts a minimum of four to five generations and can last forever. Say forever. forever. Covenant. But first of all, we, God's people, say that's us, we got to have some knowledge about covenant talk. Say covenant talk. We got to know what we're looking for when we're going to study about blood covenant, don't we? We got to know how to recognize covenant talk or what's happening in a covenant relationship when uh, we come across it, don't we? Because if we come across covenant talk, don't understand what is covenant talk, then we miss the, the whole thing. We don't have any more knowledge. And guess what happens then? Destruction. Amen? So tonight we're going to talk to you about eight steps in cutting a blood covenant. Eight steps in cutting a blood covenant. It's important that you understand these, recognize these, write these down so that you understand covenant talk. And at least three or four of these, and sometimes all of these, will be used when a covenant is made. Now, a covenant is what? A solemn binding agreement between two or more parties that cannot be broken except by the death of the one who breaks it. That covenant may be for protection, business reasons, love, or all of the above. Amen? Yeah. Amen? So let's look at eight steps in cutting a covenant. Let's go back first of all to 1 Samuel chapter 18. We're going to begin to look at the first step. 1 Samuel chapter 18, blood covenant. Eight steps in cutting a covenant. 1 Samuel 18, the word says, beginning in verse 1. 1 Samuel 18, 1, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking to Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day, meaning David, and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Now get verse 4 here. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword and to his bow and to his girdle. Now look at what Jonathan and David are doing. Jonathan and David are doing what? They're making a covenant, which is? Oh, y'all doing good. Y'all learning real quickly. David and Jonathan are making a covenant, aren't they? And why are they making covenant? They just got such a brotherly love one for another. They want to be in covenant relationship. You say, well, now, you know, it looks to me like if they just had that brotherly love relationship and they really cared that much for one another, they wouldn't have to make some kind of agreement. It's just automatically going to happen all the time. Everything's going to be great. Now, let me tell you something about covenant relationship. Look at your neighbor and say covenant relationship. Covenant relationship is going to be tested. It's going to come under fire. 
And when it comes under fire, if there's not something there that binds those two parties together, well, then there might be a good way to justify just killing each other off and forgetting the covenant. Uh, could I have a hello? <laughs> Are you with me? Now, I, I know you know what I'm talking about. Remember little Johnny you used best friends with in school or little Susie? You know, boy, you, y'all pledge, man, we're going to be best friends. Y'all built doll houses together, you know, and you boys had your club houses together, you know, and, and you had all this. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you boys all do. Yeah, because sign on the front door if he's any kind of a boys club at all. Said no girls allowed. <laughs> Isn't that right? Boy, I mean, you're going to be best friends forever. About a month later, you and little Johnny, you're best buddy. I mean, you are knocking heads. Because <laughs> little Susie smiled at both of you. <laughs> now see, if there's not something in a covenant relationship to keep that thing strong, guess what? They're going to part company. They're not going to be best friends any longer. Isn't that right? So you see, the brotherly love was the basis for cutting the covenant, but the covenant provided the ground by which the covenant or which that relationship could withstand the test of difficulty. Am I making sense to you at all? Yeah. This covenant provided the grounds on which to base the test of difficulty, something that they could survive difficulty with because they had covenant relationship. Are you with me? Yeah. Now let's look at the first step in cutting a covenant. The exchange of garments. Now I want you to write it down just like that. Step number one is the exchange of garments. Look at this. They said, we love each other. There's a brotherly love between Jonathan and David, so we're going to cut a covenant. And what did they do? It says, and Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David and his garments. Amen? What they did? They exchanged clothes. They exchanged Garments. Now, I want you to get the picture of this. Jonathan was the son of the king, so he had a, he had a robe of a prince, didn't he? David was the son of a shepherd, so his wasn't too princely, was it? See, when they come into that covenant relationship, not everything's always equal, but there's an exchange of the garments. Amen? Come here, J.J. Now, if, if Jay and I decide we're going to cut blood covenant just simply because we love one another and we want to we wanna solidify that, we want to put something together in an agreement that when the time comes that our relationship and our love one for another is put through the fire, we got something to base it on. You understand what I'm saying? So we cut covenant. And I said, Jay, let's cut covenant. He says, Pastor, let's cut covenant. So the first thing we're going to do is trade coats. He's going to give me his coat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give him my coat. We're going to put on coats. <laughs> I know the pockets on that one's empty. <laughs> are you with me? I said, are you with me? Now just stay right there. They exchanged garments. That's the first thing they did, right? Now, when somebody sees me walking down the street, they say, oh, pastor's in covenant with Jay. Somebody said, how do you know that? Well, he's got on J.J.'s coat. Said it's long enough, but it won't button in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's J.J.'s coat, so they got to be in relationship. Now, J.J., he goes strutting down the street. Somebody comes along and says, whoa, J.J.'s in covenant with pastor. Somebody else says, what do you mean he's in covenant with pastor? Well, he's got on pastor's coat. They've exchanged garments, and it will more than button in the middle. <laughs> Are you with me? But by the recognition of the exchange of the garments, people around them recognize that they are in covenant. Now, when they exchange garments, write this down. This is what this step says. It says, all that I own is